Welcome to another video coverage of This Week in Rails newsletter. This week, Greg has prepared the weekly email, and there's some great bug fixes in this week's changes. And if you would like the original email version of this newsletter, you can go to world.hey.com forward slash this.week.in.rails. This is not a publication that I create, it's rather a team of people, but I just provide the video coverage of it. So let's jump right in. For the first item is the return range not satisfiable return code for partial downloads with incorrect range. And this fix is around active storage when a partial download request with an incorrect range was made. So using active storage for my own personal projects quite a bit, I really appreciate this fix. It's not one that I've really come across, but it is potentially possible that users of the applications I make that use active storage have experienced this. And so we can look at the source code around this fix, and it seems to be fairly non-invasive, where if we got the status code for 1.6, then we're basically removing the X cascade header option. And one thing that I really like about how this community does its bug reports is that single file Rails application. So basically anyone who is taking on this task to fix the issue is gonna be able to reproduce the issue without too much effort. And you can actually access these bug reports from the Rails repo if you go under the guides. And then in the bug report templates, you'll see all the different ones. So you would want to pick the one that is appropriate to the issue that you're experiencing. So if we click on the active record main, you'll see that there's a template here where you can then basically write out a test to show that it's failing with the expected behaviors. The next one is the active record query methods select to accept a hash. If you prefer hashes over a raw SQL string, you can now use them with the select when you use the join tables. And if we dive into this one, you'll see that before when you did a joins and you wanted to select just certain attributes or table columns, then you needed to use raw SQL in order to get that information out. However, now we can just use a hash instead of using the raw SQL, which in my opinion is just going to act a lot nicer. As we're reviewing the code, you'll get the proper syntax highlighting of the hashes and overall just a nicer experience. And I also think it's a lot easier to read the hash than a single long string. And the next one is really interesting because I don't know if I've ever really come across this issue, but I can definitely see where it does make a difference. And it is the pass options to accessor to the cache fetch block. And what's interesting about this one is that if we are using some kind of third party API, we don't want to be a bad actor by hitting that API several times, especially when there is no change in the data. So on our end, on the Ruby side, we can use the Rails cache so that we're storing it in a memcached or Redis instance so that we're not hitting the API every single time. Or in this example, where they're just getting the third party token. So they don't need to get a new token every single time, especially if that token isn't expired yet. When we need to get some kind of authorization token for a third party API, we can run into situations if we're caching it and we will cache it because we don't want to hit the third party API over and over for this auth token. So instead on the rail side, we would cache it. And that's generally going to be best practices because the third party API may have resource limits that will throttle your request if you make too many within a certain amount of time. But then also, if that token is valid for multiple requests, then there's no need to make a new request to the third party for a new token. However, the issue comes into play is when this token expires. And this token can expire on whatever interval that the third party has set. And if you're using the old token, then it's not going to work. But in this new change, within the block, you can fetch the token from the remote, and then you can set and the options expires in because the options is getting passed in as a block to the tokens expiration time. So that way we always know that if we are making a request to fetch a token or some other kind of data from a third party API, then we're able to make sure that we're not using a stale token. And for the last item, we got some updates to the guides for the update all, which just helps bring some clarification around that feature. And so I really appreciate these kind of changes because it tells you fairly clearly here now in the docs that by using the update all, then we're not going to trigger any kind of callbacks or validations. 
And if your application is very heavy and reliant on callbacks, then this could be a real problem if those callbacks aren't getting triggered if you use the update all. And that's all the content for this week in Rails. However, I would like to go through all the different contributors that we've had over this past week. And there's quite a few veterans in here, as well as quite a few new contributors. So again, thank you for all your hard work that you do to help make Rails a better framework. Well, that's all for this week in Rails. Thanks for watching.